Ubisoft is really starting to show a lot of Assassin's Creed Mirage. I thought they would save most of it for the Ubisoft Forward, but it seems they're releasing these episodes focusing on different elements of the game to build up the hype to what will hopefully be a full gameplay demonstration. Now, obviously this doesn't mean much, but the fact they're showing all this gameplay speaks to me at least that the developers are confident in this game. Even showing early test footage footage and everything. It's not something we often see prior to an AC game's release, so I just thought I would note that. But there are a lot of interesting details and things revealed in this 5 minute episode, and it focuses on the three things I think most of us were most curious about, parkour, stealth, and assassinations. We got to hear a lot from the people actually working on the game, and they seemed very passionate and kept bringing up some of the game's earliest entries and said a lot of them served as the inspiration while making Mirage. Now, obviously this could just be a tactic to get us all nostalgic, but the fact they're actually acknowledging the old games makes me hopeful. But first up, they talked about parkour and showed quite a bit of footage, so we already knew the system is similar to Valhalla, but it's very clear from the animations just how much faster Basm is. They said they looked to the Ezio games for inspiration, trying to emulate the fast-paced and fluid movement of those games. The Ezio game's parkour may not have been as flashy as, let's say, Unity, but it was very smooth and responsive. They talked about the corner swing returning, which we already knew about. The ability to actually vault over things is coming back, which I can't believe was even gone in the first place. They showed the elevator, which was in Valhalla, but I imagine we'll see a lot more of those around in Baghdad, as it's a dense city. They showed the pole vault, which we of course already saw, and they showed this ladder here. At first I was just like, well duh, it's a ladder, you climb up it. But if you look at this little sketch of it in the top left, you can see it's designed so you can actually use it as like a bridge to another building, which looks pretty cool. I guess it'll just be like an alternative interactive method to getting across large gaps like the pole vault. And of course, we already knew Basm would be faster, and you can tell from what little we saw in the gameplay trailer, but I didn't realize just how much faster he is. From what they showed here, Basm is way, way faster than Eivor. I mean, look at how quickly he climbs up this little ledge. Edge. Compare that to Eivor, that's a pretty big difference. Like I said before, I'm not expecting the parkour in this game to be the best in the series or anything, but knowing they designed Baghdad with parkour in mind, significantly sped up Basm's speed while running, jumping, climbing, and made some new animations to fit that, I'm not complaining. I'm much more optimistic about parkour after seeing some of this. But next, they talked about stealth, and this was the part I was most excited about. They first talked about the new kinds of assassinations you can do, they brought back the little hiding spot assassination we could do in a lot of the previous games, the bench assassination from AC2. You could kind of do this in Valhalla, but it was very, very situational. First, you actually needed to find a bench to blend in on, which there weren't that many, and it didn't actually let you assassinate the target and drag the body back onto the bench, it would just do a regular assassination. So it's back like how it was in AC2 in Mirage. The rooftop gardens are finally back, there were a lot of those in AC1, and then like every game after that, there were just less and less. They also explained that Basm is a hidden one, and personally as a character, combat to him is a last resort. We pretty Pretty much already knew this, but good to have the confirmation. Another very important detail they shared is that they reworked the enemy AI and detection system. If you remember Valhalla on launch, it had some very broken detection. You could be insta-spotted from what felt like miles away, and I know a lot of people were concerned about that being an issue in Mirage as well. Because obviously, in a stealth-focused game, a broken detection system wouldn't be great. But knowing they reworked it and that it hopefully works well is a big sigh of relief. Next, they talked about the enemy types. There's the marksman that can shoot your eagle out of the sky. 
We actually heard about this enemy in the leaks, so that proved to be true. Personally, I didn't really feel like this game needed the drone eagle, as long as we have the traditional eagle vision, but whatever. There's a spear enemy that pokes haystacks to try and find you, and there are horn bearers who can call for reinforcements. You know, nothing crazy with the enemy types, pretty standard, but it's clear you'll have to approach and prioritize them differently, which creates a little bit of depth to those encounters. But very importantly, social stealth is actually back for real this time. Hallelujah. We got to see the crowd blending, which seems to work like the older games where you can just walk into a crowd of people to blend in. In Valhalla, to crowd blend, you had to find a specific group of people and then hold a button and you would automatically walk with them. Here, it looks like the old games where you simply walk into a space where there's a lot of people and it'll show that you're hidden. That's a big win in my opinion, and like the leak said, the factions are back as well, where you can hire specific groups to blend in with and help you infiltrate restricted areas. They said you need specific tokens to hire them, which is interesting, it's not just going to be money like it was in the old games. And lastly, they talked about the main assassinations and a bit of the mission structure. Our main goal in Mirage will be to assassinate members of the Order of Ancients and free Baghdad of their influence. Again, we heard in the leak that we'd have four main targets with a fifth kind of being the leader of the Order in Baghdad. That seems to be true here. They also said there's going to be plenty of bureaus scattered across Baghdad, which is an element I really missed from the original game, visiting each bureau and creating a plan for your assassination. It sounds like that's sort of returning here. They said the bureaus act as hubs where you can take on contracts and side missions, which includes rescue missions and assassinations. Again, sounding like some of the side content we used to have in these games. I'm thinking about the different assassination contracts you would get from those pigeons. I really loved doing those, especially in Black Flag and the Ezio trilogy, so I'm excited to know that's coming back to some degree. They then talked about the investigations, confirming things that we heard from the leak where you need to discover your targets and learn information about them to create an effective assassination plan. They said they made a new investigation board that replaces the quest log from the last few games, so I imagine we'll be able to open up this menu, see our targets and all the different intel and information we have on them, all displayed on this board. And the last thing they briefly touched on was the black box assassinations, where we'll have the freedom to assassinate a main target in a multitude of ways. I really hope we get to see a black box assassination in the gameplay demo, because I'm curious just how many different ways we can assassinate one target. I'm not expecting it to be on the level of something like Hitman, but if there's a lot, that could give this game some really good replay value. Oh, and one final thing that I found really surprising, they added an option to turn on a nostalgic filter that gives the desaturated and kind of tinted blue and gray look of the original Assassin's Creed. That's pretty sweet, they've never given an option to change the color palette or filter of an Assassin's Creed game before, I definitely will try that out. Again, you could just argue, oh, they're just trying to capitalize on nostalgia, and maybe, but it's not like this is something they had to add, so the fact they did feels like they actually do care. And this episode ends with Mirage's version of Ezio's family once again. You already know the soundtrack is gonna slap. Regardless of what you feel about AC games, that's somewhere they always deliver. Oh, and one last little thing I wanted to mention, they were showing some concept art of the game, and in one of them, it looks like Basm's hidden one robes are green. Maybe that's just because of the lighting, but I wouldn't be surprised if we could dye our robes different colors like the old games. But all in all, this little episode definitely answered some of my questions, and I'm happy they went deeper into some of the mechanics and various systems within the game. I know some people were worried after the gameplay trailer, and this does a much better job of giving us an actual feel for what the game will play like. Personally, I think it sounds very promising, but as always, that's just what I think. Let me know how you guys feel about this new look at Mirage down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. And other than that, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day, Assassins.